adding color to a grayscale image in Photoshop. So there are many, many methods of adding color to a grayscale image, and there are many, many methods of converting a photo to grayscale. So I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of some ideas. This lesson continues on into next week where I will show you in much more detail how some of these things can be done. So tinting a grayscale image with color produces interesting effects and you may have seen some professional photographers do this effect. So first, what I have to do is convert my color image to grayscale. And I can do that in a number of ways. I can first, probably most easy, go under image and mode and choose grayscale. When I choose grayscale, I'm choosing to discard all color information. And now I have to go back to mode and RGB in order to add color. So I can do that. And now I'm able to add some color to this. Now I can do this in one of two ways. I can go under my image and adjustments, which allow me to do some color adjustments. One thing to note, when I go to the image menu and adjustments, these adjustments are destructive adjustments. This means that once you apply them, the pixels are altered and you can't go back. So everything that I've done so far by going to grayscale mode, and then if I choose an adjustment here, I'm being destructive. So I have destroyed some of the quality or the information on my pixels. So let's just look here at a couple. Maybe we'll do a hue and saturation. So when I do a hue and saturation, I'll get a dialog box. Most of those options will give you a dialog box. I say always turn on your preview so you have an idea of what is happening. In this case, I want to colorize. So I'm going to choose the colorize box. And right off the bat, you can see kind of a more of a reddish deep sepia kind of look. Um, but I can change my hue. And as I slide through my color wheel, you're seeing the different applications applied to my grayscale image. Okay, so I've destroyed the pixels by ripping off all the color information, but now I'm adding some color back to it. So that's one way that I can do this effect. I'm going to go up to my file and I'm going to choose revert. Revert will revert back to the last time this file was saved, which in my case I haven't saved it, so it happens to bring me back to when I first opened this. Now the second method that I can do is use an adjustment layer. And the adjustment layers are found under my layers panel. I'll take this out so you can see a little bit easier. So at the bottom we have these icons. The one that looks kind of like a, ha a circle, half filled, half not, those are the adjustment layers. So these are non-destructive. So this means that my adjustment can be hidden or I can remove this adjustment. I have not or will not destroy any pixels. So the first thing again I need to do is I need to convert this to black and white. So by going into that black and white right off the bat, I have a black and white document. Now just to show you, um, each of these adjustments will open up what appears to be a panel. You can just tuck it back away. Here you can see that this is my adjustment applied. The nice thing here, I can turn it on and I can turn it off. Really pretty cool. So let's go back and do some uh, hue ad adjustments here. So now the stacking order of this does matter. So if I go to hue and saturation, this is the same thing I did over here under the menu. This time though, it will be non-destructive. And I'm able to again, choose the hue or the area that I'd like. I'll just tuck this back away. This is a panel that you can open and close. And so here's my hue and saturation. And you can see it lists it with the type of adjustment that I'm using. If I turn it off, or turn it on. And I can even turn both of these off and end up with my original flower that I started with. I can just put the hue and saturation on and you can see it does that same effect. Okay, so those are some very simple ways using adjustments that you can do some colorization to your images.